Ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the market to pick up a new RTX 40 graphics card or an AMD equivalent over the Christmas period for you or a loved one, I would highly suggest at this point you just hold off until January. There are new rumours which give us insight into the release date, final specification, as well as performance increases for the RTX 40 Super Series from Nvidia. And perhaps most importantly, the new prices look absolutely excellent. Honestly, if RTX 40 had initially launched with these prices, I think its reception in the market would have been very, very good. But at this stage, it's great for those of us who have yet to upgrade to RTX 40. So these rumors come to us from IT Home, and I will leave a link in the video description. But first of all, let's just go over the general stuff for the dates. So the RTX 40 announcement has been long rumored, of course, for myself as well as others to take place at CES. So that's gonna be the 8th of January. However, there will be a staggered launch of this super series. So if you wanna pick up the 4070 Super, that's gonna be the 17th of January. And then a week later on the 24th, we will see the launch of the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is, I don't know, that, that, that's just a great name. I'm sorry, it just makes me chuckle every time I hear it. And then finally, we will see the RTX 4080 Super launch on the 31st of January. Now, for those who missed my previous video, just to give you a quick hint, I don't think that the 4090 Ti or 4090 Super or anything like that is going to launch. According to all of my sources, it's dead as of right now anyway, but who knows in the future. But you can check my previous video out if you want more information regarding that. So what about the actual prices and performance information? Well, this is where, of course, it's really going to be, you know, make or break for these graphics cards. And again, IT Home have done a nice job compiling all of this in, um, and this is from a couple of different sources. But basically speaking, the 4080 Super 16 gigabyte is going to cost 1000 US dollars. Now, of course, this is not official pricing. However, I have heard from multiple sources and as well as reported this a couple of times in videos that I have heard one to 200 US dollars seem to be what Nvidia was shooting for to reduce the prices of their cards. And this does seem to be panning out here. So it's gonna be 1000 um, bucks for the 4080 Super, which is a nice price cut over the MSRP of the initial 4080. And it's gonna be anywhere between six and 9% faster than the vanilla card. Then the 4070 Ti Super, I'm sorry, I just chuckle every time I hear that name. It hasn't had the price exactly confirmed yet, but it's between 800 and 849 US dollars. And it's gonna be anywhere from 14 to 22% faster than the 4070 Ti. So of course that is gonna depend on different things, whether something's more bandwidth constrained, etc., etc. Then finally, the bottom rung card is going to be uh, the 4070 Super 12 gigabyte model, 599 to 649 US dollars. And this is basically going to be very close to the performance of the 4070 Ti, but you guys can kind of figure that out anyway based on all the specifications that have leaked. So it's going to have almost 21% uh, more co uh, cores than the vanilla card. But it also, of course, is going to be a relatively decent price at 599 to 649 US dollars. Now, I personally think that that is pretty damn aggressive pricing. I have heard that there may be other GPUs in NVIDIA's lineup which do get a price cut. I have heard that the 4090 from a single source is going to be getting a price cut as well. But I haven't, at least at the time I'm recording this, been able to confirm that from multiple sources. So only a single source has told me that the 4090 is going to be getting a price cut. So don't, you know, I, I wouldn't hold your breath. But either way, this is really good news. It seems that there's going to be a pretty big, you know, gap between the 40 series, the super launch, should I say, as well as Blackwell. And as always with this stuff, the mid-range cards will always launch later. So for example, if you did pick up like a 4070 Super, it's probably going to be a little bit later that we're going to see the equivalent Blackwell card launch anyway. But as always with this stuff, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm really excited actually for these GPUs. I think that there does need to be, um, you know, a little bit of a, a shot in the arm for, um, for the mid-range and... Uh, I think that also is going to be very true for AMD as well as Intel. But speaking of AMD, I am actually hearing a lot of rumors 
that the Radeon RX 8000 series, which of course is mostly going to be exciting for a lot of folks because of RDNA 4. I've spoken about the specifications of N44 as well as 40A and the performance targets a billion times at this point, but as a quick reminder, the 48, the N48 GPU is going to be up to roughly the 7900 GRE or maybe a little bit faster, the XT, something along those lines. At this point, it's not 100% final because obviously we are not talking about final software, final silicon, etc, etc. And of course, ray tracing is going to be about 10 to 30% faster for RDNA 4. Again, depending on the software and how the drivers and optimization all shapes up. Either way, what is interesting is that I am really hearing now that N31 is going to be getting some type of refresh. Now, it doesn't seem, from what I'm hearing, that there will be a specification change. Now, I'm sure most of you guys know that N31 does technically have the TSVs on the um, on the MCDs to allow uh, vCache. And that was, of course, a really big rumor that that's what AMD would do, that they would basically release a refresh which would have a additional um, Infinity Cache. And um, that doesn't seem to be what they're doing. It seems like there's no major changes in the specification. Perhaps it will be slightly higher clocked or something like that, maybe faster memory, but I've heard some mixed things about that. But the general gist so far is that it's basically the same GPUs again. So there's no architectural changes to be very clear. It's not like they're adding, I don't know, additional, you know, there's no additional ALU, for example, like, you know, it's it's essentially the same thing. There's no improvements to the actual architecture. I don't think there's anything for the MCDs. Maybe there's higher clock frequencies, maybe better binning or whatever. But ultimately speaking, it seems like it's essentially the same thing again. And they are going to be the Radeon 8000 series. Now, that's kind of weird to me, um, but I can see why they're going to do that. Because again, technically speaking... Um, RDNA 4 is probably not going to outperform in raster anyway um, the highest end N31 SKU. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this shapes up, particularly given, of course, Battle Mage. And while I've heard a lot of rumors and I've reported a lot of rumors about Battle Mage, and I won't go over them again in this video, but uh, in, in general, I think Battle Mage is perhaps the architecture I'm most excited for um, out of the three because. Quite frankly, I just think it's going to be very important to have a third player. The problem in ba with Battle Mage is it's essentially like RDNA 4. It's not, of course, going to be competing with something like, uh, uh, um, what's the word, Blackwell. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with all of this coming forward. But with that said, guys, uh, this is just a quick video. Tomorrow is going to be uh, a lot more of an extensive uh, video talking about the next generation Xbox. So if you're interested in that, definitely get uh, subscribed to the channel if you're not already. There's going to be some other very interesting leaks which are going to be popping up as well. With that said, have an amazing day. Stay safe. Bye for now.